Is it possible to completely overcome trauma, especially severe childhood trauma? Yes, I want to get into this big topic today. So for the sake of this conversation, please forget everything you might think you know or think about trauma. I want to explain what trauma really is, what the symptoms of trauma are, so that you can find this is something you might be experiencing, and of course, most importantly, what somebody can do. If this is what they experience, if this is how they have lived for as long as they can remember, what they can really do to get to the other side of it. I think that's the most important part about this conversation. So number one, yes. Yes, it is absolutely possible to completely overcome the symptoms and the consequences and the ramifications of childhood trauma. And again, I'm going to explain to you what those are. Obviously, for the sake of this conversation, I'm not going to get into every detail, but even those 10 items that I will list out for you, you will have a good understanding whether this is something that you might be experiencing. And also, I think it might be interesting to immediately share with you how would you even know whether you have overcome um, childhood trauma or trauma from the past, PTSD, as it is often referred to, right? Post-traumatic stress disorder or even anxiety, depression. Those are often the symptoms, right, of trauma. Well, how you would know that you have overcome and that you have come to the other side of it is when you can feel relaxed in your own body, when you can feel inner peace, when you can feel confident, when you feel like your self-worth and your self-esteem have regenerated, have rehabilitated. In other words, when you feel good about the person you are, when you can feel proud about the person you are, when you can feel peaceful and even confident and even proud about who you are, when you no longer worry so much, especially what other people think of you, what other people say of you, when you stop worrying incessantly about the future and maybe about your children, about what's going to happen, and you are constantly um, you know, uh, considering like a doom and gloom scenario. Those are just some of the ways. And of course, our entire body posture, our entire physiology, as well as psychology will shift and change when a person has the ability to resolve a lot of this pain, a lot of this hurt, a lot of these bottled up emotions. When you can finally just relax, be yourself, and feel good about it. And also know the best is yet to come. When you can have positivity, like real positivity. I'm not talking about the motivational videos, rah, rah, pep talk. Not that kind. You know, I have to tell myself affirmations every day. Yeah, it's cute and it's a nice approach. But so many people who do affirmations, they don't actually believe it. And that leads to an incongruency, that leads to an insecurity. That's like, yeah, I'm going through all these motions, but I don't really believe it. And that's, again, that's not how you would know, right? In other words, if you were to say those affirmations, if you were to wake up excited and happy and passionate and hopeful and enthused and looking forward to the future, right, with excitement and knowing that you, no matter what comes at you, you will be able to handle it. it you'll just take care of it. It will be fine. You, you, would be, you will be happy to become the leader in your life. And also self-trust will be established. You will be able to look at the world and, and find joy and peace and happiness. And you will start to attract opportunities toward you that actually you know, lead to a compelling future. And many, many more things, right? So in other words, all that negativity will have turned into positivity. All that pessimism will have turned into optimism. All that insecurity will have turned into confidence. That, and literally, this is a physical, emotional, mental transformation and experience. And yes, that is available. And yes, that is possible. 
I don't care how severe that childhood trauma is. Not that I don't care, I do care, but the point is regardless, that's, that's a better word. As a hypnotherapist, I should know how to choose my words and use my words better, shouldn't I? <laughs> right? But keep in mind, regardless, regardless of how dark and how difficult and how bad your past might have been, you absolutely, undoubtedly, definitely have the potential to rehabilitate yourself, to restore yourself from the ego to your soul, to your psyche, to everything in between. That can be done. And please keep in mind, the way I like to do this is through hypnotherapy. And also keep in mind that people come to me when they have already experienced years of therapy. Many of them are on medications. They keep telling me nothing has worked. You know, is this even gonna, is this even gonna help me? You know, how is this different? I get it. You know, a lot of people, unfortunately, have already invested a lot of time, money, energy into things that just have not worked the way they want yet. Doesn't mean therapy was useless. It maybe doesn't even mean that it wasn't helpful. It just means that you haven't had the breakthrough that you want yet. You have not yet received the results that you desire and you deserve. And so in that sense, hypnotherapy is a completely different approach and I'm going to explain to you at the end how it is different, why it works so powerfully and fast. And fast. And again, I am incredibly grateful. I feel very privileged. I feel very humbled. I feel incredibly appreciative that this tool, this therapy, this method was given to me, this teaching that you know, in these last couple of years, I had the ability, the, the uh, opportunity to help my clients transform their lives in the most meaningful, deepest way. And, uh, you know, I, I, it just gives me so much happiness and joy to know that change can happen relatively quickly. Just because somebody endured years and years of crap, so to speak, does not mean that this is a life sentence or a death sentence or that you have to be wallowing in that situation for the rest of your life. Absolutely not. I have seen miracles. I have seen how people can change in a relatively short time and literally restore their health, their wealth, their confidence, their happiness. So, no psychological skills needed. Just, you don't need to have it. No prerequisites. Anybody has the, the um, possibility to change in the most powerful, profound, positive way. So I want to share with you some of those, um, how, some of those indicators of how you might know whether you are carrying the symptoms of childhood trauma or trauma. And by the way, yes, remember when I said, forget everything you think you know about trauma, because so often people think trauma is just refers to things that were literally in textbook definition, traumatic, like war zones, horrific abuse, psychological, right? Uh, those big things, car accidents, you know, massive divorce, massive life shift. Those are the obvious trauma. But trauma simply means that you've had an experience or many experiences where whatever happened, you did not have the tools, the skills, the abilities to move through that. Because here's the thing, the authority, the authority figures in our life, most likely our parents, the caregivers, right? Their job is to teach their children how to regulate their nervous system. That's the biological, fundamental, most important job parents have, is to teach their children, here's what you do when times are good, here's what you do when times are bad, here's what you, how you navigate through emotions, here's how you handle stress. Teach them that they have the resources inside of themselves to to manage, to, to move through that situation with grace, with ease, how to do that. 
Now, I don't know about you, I don't even know one person who told me that their parents were competent at that, that they, no matter what happened at them, whether it was a nosebleed, whether it was a car accident, whether it was Johnny stole my lollipop again, whatever it was, how many people do you know that actually were taught how to tap into those re resources, how to use your emotions, how to use your logic, how to use your intelligence, and how to move through those situations with ease, grace, and confidence. Most people were not brought up with these skills. And so if you've had moments, one or several moments, where you didn't, something happened, something hard, for, for you hard, because remember too, there's a, it, the perspective of a child being locked in the basement for two minutes because they're playing hide and seek. and But now the child feels like, oh my God, this has been a long time. Maybe they forgot about me. Maybe they don't love me. Maybe, a child's perspective of what trauma, okay, or what a difficult experience is, is completely different than that of an adult. So it's not fair to say, oh my God, it was just two minutes you were locked in a basement. What's the big deal? To a child, that two minutes might have seemed like a lifetime. To a child, that two minutes might have been comprised of, I completely forgot we were playing hide and seek. I, I thought that my parents forgot me here. You know, because a, a child lives in the world of fantasy. A child lives in the world of imagination. And there's so many things that could happen literally in seconds. And all of a sudden, a child is off in another world, thinking and believing certain things. And, and maybe it wasn't even a difficult situation. But most likely, there was a moment that was overwhelming. You did not have the tools, the skills, the abilities to move and navigate through that situation with ease and with competence and with grace or whatever else so that you can be like, ah, oh, this is what I need to do. Take some deep breaths or, you know, if when mom gives me a hug, I feel comforted. I feel safe. Ah, oh, everything's going to be okay again. No, chances are, however you got through, in those moments, you felt panic, you felt fear, you felt forgotten, you felt abandoned, you felt neglected, you felt abused, and many, many other things. And here is what's important. Not only did you feel a lot of these emotions that were very difficult to take, very hard to move through, very um, overwhelming, but very often what also happens in that experience is we start to um, we start to install unconsciously, please, unconsciously, not on purpose, we start to develop a certain belief about ourselves and about the world. I'm going to give you an example of how a person experienced lifelong anxiety, severe anxiety. And when we got to the root cause, when that man, a lawyer, 45 years old, got to the root cause of what caused the anxiety. In moments, the anxiety lifted, the fear shifted, gone. He literally got to understand what caused this anxiety. And what caused this anxiety for him, when we got to the root cause was, he was five years old, his mother unfortunately passed away due to an awful illness, everything happened very, very quickly. And maybe somebody explained to him that his mother was dead or and sick and whatever. But to the child, what, how he interpreted all of that, and again, remember, through the child's intelligence of the five-year-old, he basically decided, my mother doesn't love me and this is why she left me. And so if I can't be loved, there must be something wrong with me. I'm somehow broken. Something is not right with me. And therefore... He literally started to believe that not only is he blemished and broken and somehow defect, but because of that, he cannot be safe in the world. If his own mother can't even love him, if even she leaves him, then what does that say about him? So he decided that the world isn't safe. You know, I'm no good. I'm a no good. And that was the onset of his anxiety. So just logically think about it. Right? Think about what might happen if a child starts to believe, I am no good, my mother doesn't love me, I, you know, I deserve to, to be deserted. How could that person possibly grow up, feel safe, feel confident, feel good about who they are? 
feel excited about the future. Feel like, yes, here I am world, you know, I'm here to start my business. Lifelong anxiety. And he muddled and pushed his way through law school and, and life and all of that. But it was always with the undertone of fear and stress and pressure and I am not enough. And he finally had the ability to relax and to understand himself on a completely different level. So some of those symptoms that, again, I recognize when I communicate with people, you know, the writing is on the wall, so to speak. So if you experience things like persistent worrying, you know, constant worrying, whether it's about the future, it's about yourself, it's about your health, it's about your kids, it's about your pets, always thinking that the bad is going to happen. Number two, overthinking plans, overthinking conversations, overthinking goals, thinking about the worst possible outcome. What if this happens? What if that happens? I should have said this. What if he thinks this of me? What if she thinks that of me? How could I make that better? How, you know, what are they going to think of me? Oh, I'm, I was five minutes late. How are they going to blame me? Constant overthinking, self-judgment, right? Number three, perceiving situations and events or people as threatening. And again, remember, we learn so quickly in our childhood. For example, if you were raised by authority figures that were very strict, that were constantly criticizing you, that were constantly shaming you and blaming you, and nothing was ever good enough, well, guess what? Your subconscious mind takes a snapshot of those experiences, of those authority figures, and basically, you in that moment, you might decide authority figures are threatening. They are here to punish me. They're here to abuse me. They're here to, to shame me and blame me. And so no wonder you grow up and anytime you encounter a police officer or a lawyer or whatever you consider an authority figure to be or a teacher or people in uniforms or bosses, unconsciously you consider those people as threatening. No wonder you can't relax. No wonder you can't speak what's on your heart and on your mind. No wonder you can't feel like yourself, right? So this is just another example. Number four, difficulty handling uncertainty. I don't think we need to get into that, but it's really also this idea of, oh my God, what if this, can I really handle it? What if I can't? And expecting the worst case scenario. Number five is indecisiveness and fear of making wrong decisions. You know, if you've ever been in a place of, I just can't make, make, make up my mind. I just don't know. What if I say this? What if I say that? Should I do this? Should I do that? And it becomes a constant ping pong and so much time goes by. And this uncertainty and difficulty making decisions. Yeah, again, because chances are, when you did make decisions when you were a child, you were most likely punished for it or you were criticized for, you know, uh, why you didn't pass the test and why you, you know, hang out with these people and what's wrong with wearing those clothes and why did you pick that haircut or whatever it might have been, right? Number six is, and this is a big one, an in inability to relax, always feeling like on edge, irritable, restless, and this is the typical scenario for, you know, workaholics, right? People who, and, and addictive behaviors that, you know, you take that person and they finally are on vacation. They finally get to spend time with their family. They finally get to quote unquote, relax, take time for themselves, but they cannot, they're not able to, not because they don't want to, not because they don't deserve it. It's simply because they haven't been taught how to relax. They haven't given permission to relax. And so you give these people the best circumstances. You give them the most beautiful surroundings. You give them all the luxury. You give them the most comfortable bed. They have not yet learned how to relax. Instead, they're checking their phone mercilessly. They're checking their emails. They're responding to everything. They constantly feel like they should be doing something. They often feel guilt. I should be at work. I should be helping out. I should be checking in with my boss. 
And so, and so you can just imagine what this can cause in a family, right? In a, in a relationship, you know, that will then often lead to the people that really need your love. They really need your attention. Well, now they are not getting it either and because you cannot give it. You haven't learned how. You haven't even learned how to give yourself attention and love and appreciation, right? And so, or, or weekends, right? Having a hard time shutting off, shutting down, just lounging around, just relaxing. And even though you might logically know how important it is because there needs to be some sort of balance, the yin and the yang, the day and the night, and the white and the black, right? Even though you understand it logically, but physiologically and psych psychologically, this might be very, very hard for you to do. Well, again, because your nervous system is in a constant sympathetic nervous system mode, fight, flight, freeze. And that is a massive indicator of childhood trauma, a person who just really doesn't know how to shut off, how to shut down. And remember, this has eventually become a bad habit. And I know that often psychologists, psychiatrists, doctors might argue with me that this has to do with their brain chemistry and genetics and, you know, uh, um, personality disorders. Yeah, no kidding. Of course something is going to happen in somebody's brain chemistry if their body is constantly on edge, if their mind, if this person didn't learn in childhood how to regulate their nervous system if they're in a constant fight flight freeze mode no kidding but keep in mind that is a habit that person learned to become this way an unconscious habit and we can change that when we work with the subconscious or unconscious mind and understand, and I'm already giving you some of the steps, right? How hypnotherapy works differently by really getting to the root cause. What caused this habit to become so deeply ingrained? This sense of unrest, irritability, on edge, temper tantrums, having a bad temper, anger, rage, addiction, alcoholism, all those things. Those are really just, please forgive the word just, I don't mean to undermine it, I don't mean it like that. But when I say just, it's just a habit. The, the good news about that, what I'm trying to say is that we can change it. We can change it. It's literally like, imagine if somebody taught you how to tie your shoelaces one way. And now we find out, hey, guess what? There's actually a better way, a much faster way. I know it's silly analogy, but that kind of is the same exact thing. Yeah, you learned how to tie your shoelace this way. For years you've done it. Well, we can change that. There's a better way. There's a more efficient way. Maybe they, they created a machine that can, you know, <laughs> call, right? So this is, how your, this is how your mind and your brain, though, can change. And this is really good news because I've seen this again and again and again. Um, Number seven, difficulty concentrating, focusing, where the mind goes blank, there's 100 tabs open, or you feel like completely empty or racing thoughts. Just another very, very clear classic indicator. Number eight, physical exhaustion, insomnia, muscle tension, constant fatigue, easily startled and triggered. Um, you know how when certain people have the ability to trigger you, right? So often my clients will say, you know, I wish that person wouldn't make me so angry. You know, I wish that, um, well, remember, we can't blame the person for making us angry. But what we can do is we can learn how to respond differently to that person. That is something that is in our control so that we don't have to be so triggered by that person. That is something we can change. Because everybody has free will, everybody's entitled to do what they want. Everybody is entitled to do what they want, but how you respond, that's the difference that makes a difference, and we can change that, right? Um, so yeah, nervous, shaky, uncomfortable in your own skin, headaches, dizziness, ears ringing, those are all indicators that these are symptoms of 
childhood trauma or even past trauma. Number nine, and this is big, 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 big. This is actually one of the things that I love to approach first when I get to work with my clients is this constant inner negative self-talk, self-criticism, self-blame, self-shame, self-loathing. You should be better. You should do better. You should have figured this out. You should be further along. What's wrong with you? You're such a failure. You, you know, why haven't you done this yet? And you should be like such and such and you will never amount to anything and it's too late for you and you're too old. And again, indicators of low self-worth. But the truth is that actually it's not that your self-worth is low. You have been taught how to do, how to be, how to have low self-worth. Okay, you have been taught how to become that person. And hence that negative self-talk, that inner bully, that as if, you know, uninvited, but always dependable, always there. And, and yet, remember, we spend 24-7 with ourselves, with our thoughts. And so imagine what would happen if you could change those 50 to 70,000 thoughts that we have every day that are repetitive and for most people negative, unless we train ourselves differently, unless we give ourselves the upgrade and the update, right? Notice the harm that causes. Notice what that feels like when you are constantly bombarded with this negativity, with this self-loathing and self-bashing. That is not helpful. It is not useful. And again, it is a very, very bad habit that somebody taught us how to do. And number 10, feeling overwhelmed, unable to cope, social withdrawal, panic attacks, fears, phobias. Those are, again, um, very often that will get worse. You know, people close themselves off from society because they don't feel safe with people. Even though they feel lonely, they want to be in a relationship. They so desperately would, would like to have love in their life. They want to find a partner. But if on the other side, you feel like nobody can be trusted, there are no good people out there. You know, I can't have a good relationship because my parents never did and I don't know anybody who did. Well, then that is a limiting belief that will stand in our way. Because if that's what we fundamentally believe and that's what we expect, well, no wonder we can't attract somebody that would love us, somebody that we can love, right? No wonder we can't establish a connection. Because that energy, that vibration, those beliefs of I can't find anybody good are really what are, are, are the signals that we're sending out. Does that, does that make sense? And so basically everything that I just shared with you, all of those things, we shift. That is what we need to shift so that you can, as I said, feel comfortable in your skin again, feel relaxed, feel confident. Most importantly, begin to grow and, and um, to grow and expand a sense of appreciation about yourself, acknowledgement, validation, unconditional love, kindness toward yourself, caring, curiosity, compassion, empathy. As if, like turning the page, starting over. As if you could just let go of all of that baggage let go of anything that doesn't serve you and have the ability to take all of the good and the bad and the ugly because here's the thing believe it or not a lot of those things that you experienced whether it was in your childhood or during those traumatic events what we also find underneath all of that even though yes there was a lot of hurt a lot of uh, pain a lot of anger, a lot of shame, guilt, whatever it might be. But underneath, there are a lot of inner resources that are available to you that you have not yet tapped into. And once you uncover those and embody them and you become that person, 
that's when you can start to feel whole and complete. It's just that those resources, those positive, powerful, potential resources that are available to you, that also is you. Right now, they're just polluted by all of this gunk, by all of these negative emotions, by all of those limiting beliefs, right? And you can just, just think about most of the day, what are you thinking and feeling? What is your vibration most of the day? Are you spending most of your day in anger and fear and sadness, hurt, guilt, shame? Or are you spending your day in positivity, joy, enthusiasm, expansion, hope, you know, feeling happy, gratitude. And same with beliefs. What are your beliefs? Do you believe, oh my God, if things are just going to get worse, there's going to be a recession. What if that my political candidate? And what are you consumed with in your thoughts? And I can't, nothing's going to ever work out for me. And I'm only going to get older. I'm only going to get weaker. I'm only going to get sicker. Things are just going to go worse and worse and worse. Where are you spending? Where is your mind at? And if we continue, right, believing and thinking about those limiting beliefs, well, guess what's going to grow? Where our energy, where our focus goes, our energy goes, and that is what's going to start to and continue to expand. And for that reason, most importantly, it would be so helpful and useful and valuable to finally be able to get get over this past that has been keeping you small and limited and insecure. And you can do that. No questions asked. It is absolutely possible. Just because somebody had a difficult childhood or a difficult past does not mean it has to define your future. Absolutely not. You get to change your mind about that, pun intended. You get to change your mind about that. If you want, you get to become a different person. If you want, you get to become more empowered than you have in a long time, more inspired, more confident, more better, more, more, more of that. If you want, anybody has that ability. And here's the thing. I used to be in that before. I used to think, you know, that's not available. I can't be that person. This is just how my personality is. And I spent way too many years feeling incredibly disempowered, disadvantaged. It can't be me. Lack mentality, lack mindset, you know, and, and, and I remember so clearly how debilitating it felt, how, how, um, inferior I felt, how just broken I felt, not a fun feeling. But this is something we can turn around. And through my experience, personally as well as, as, well as professionally, through my research, through my data, and, and all of these experiences I've had, hypnotherapy, in my opinion, in my experience, is one of the most powerful tools when it comes to helping people overcome trauma because it works relatively quickly anybody can do it it's relatively easy to do as long as you're working with somebody who knows what they're doing obviously you want to have good rapport with that person you want to feel comfortable with that person you want to feel safe with that person and when all those things are, are there the rest is really just up to let's get into the work because that inner work or shadow work or whatever people want to call it, I really don't like labels because they just, they don't give enough information. They're very, um, I don't know, it's, they put things in a box. But really, the magic of hypnotherapy is truly helping you see the magic of your mind, the mind-body connection, the, the, the ability to heal. In fact, I consider hypnotherapy not only the future, the future of therapy, in my opinion, is absolutely hypnotherapy. Hands down, I've never seen anything more powerful, anything better. And I consider hypnotherapy mind-body healing, period. 
because it gives you the ability to show you how powerful you are through the power of your mind, through, because here's the thing, the body gives us the symptoms that there is something wrong, that there is something that needs help. The symptoms of anxiety, depression, heart palpitations, sweating, shaking, insomnia, headaches, fibromyalgia, those are all the symptoms, yeah? And when the mind can connect to those symptoms and when the mind can investigate and understand and then together you get a higher perspective of what's really going on, that's how the healing takes place. That's when the person's cells get regenerated and the entire system gets into alignment. The entire system has the, has the potential to heal and to get back into balance. And instead of dis-ease, we have ease. Instead of disharmony, we have harmony. Instead of dysregulation, we have regulation. And lastly, yes, it is really important now that you're an adult, eventually after, you know, hypnotherapy, I teach my clients how to regulate their nervous system so that regardless of whatever trauma, stress, pain they might be, because here's the thing, life is life. Life is going to do life, right? There is going to be problems, challenges we're going to have to face. But how you respond to those, right? Instead of frantic and stressed out and freaked out, how you respond differently is going to make the difference in you being able to move through that with a clear head, with confidence, with equanimity, with inner peace, with strength, with resilience, with courage, and most importantly, an unshakable, unbreakable faith within yourself that you absolutely can. And that is inside of you and you can achieve that. Hope this was helpful. I'll see you soon. Remember to be good to yourself.